As part of the 2009 Scream Festival, Colin Pinkerton held an open day at his Iron Park, where he has an impressive collection of antique machinery. Colin, how many years has it taken you to put together this lovely collection? Five, maybe six at most. Yeah. And can you tell us a bit about where they've all come from? Well, some of them just up the road and some as far away as the Manoi too, and um, just wherever I've been able to find things, yes. Have most of the machinery been donated or do you have to buy most of it? The bigger stuff, more expensive stuff I've had to buy. The older, smaller stuff has been donated and I've restored it. Yes. And can you tell us, do most of the machines all work? Yes, they all work, eventually. So obviously it's taken a few hours to, to get them all back to working order and in such fine condition. Can you tell us a little bit about what's involved there? Uh, a lot of hours. Uh, something like the traction engine behind me has been done professionally by other people. And um, this took about 10 months to, for restoration. And the smaller stuff, obviously, shorter time. Now, what about yourself? How did you become interested in old machinery? I guess, in hindsight, I was looking for something to do in retirement after giving up milking cows and uh, just started picking up one or two things and it just grew from there. So what did you actually start with? You mentioned some old radios, is that uh, right? I had a, had a spot with some old radios in it. I actually started with an old Dodge pickup truck and uh, it was my first purchase. Picked up a few cars and then the smaller stuff started for me. Now I noticed there's a few chaps around here tinkering and toiling with things. How many, how many other people help you and, and uh, do you have to pay them or they do it for love too? They fortunately do it for love as well. I've got two people, my brother and a, and a chap that helps me with the uh, steam engine. He's got his steam ticket, I haven't. I noticed that you have a donation box over there supporting the Uganda Heifer Project. Can you tell us a bit about that fund? That's the one we've supported. Lynn and I went to Uganda a few years back and uh, we've decided to support that one as a, just a, as a donation to make my time worthwhile. Now, if people want to come and have a look at Iron Park, how do they go about doing that? Well, it's a matter of contacting me, and if, it's, if I'm available, I'll, I'll take groups mainly, because it's time-consuming, one person at a time. Basically, I like groups before I open up, but they just need to ring me. This is Vic Clark, who was one of the original initiators of the Uganda Heifer project. Vic, could you firstly tell us how long ago did the fund start? Well, the project started in 2004, and uh, Ross and Carol Turner and my wife and I, Rosemary and I, went to Uganda for four and a half months under the Africa Inland Mission, and uh, we we uh, associated were associated with the Anglican Church in the part of Uganda we were with. And we started a, a project, we were there for four and a half months and started this project of buying and giving heifers to individual Ugandan families, families with a need and families with uh, the ability to look after a heifer on a zero grazing basis. And that year, 2004, we, when we came home, there had been six heifers bought over there, good Frisian heifers, and given to six individual families in one village. Okay, and so how many heifers have, have been given out to date now then? Well, t up till now there's been about 35 heifers bought and given into six different villages. But one of the good things about the project is that a family is given a heifer and they're only, they don't have to pay for it. Their only commitment is that they have to, they're required to rear they have the first heifer calf to six months of age and give it to another family in the village. So we think, we're not sure of the numbers, but we think there's about 60 animals now, cows, heifers and young stock, with individual families in Uganda, in uh, Ruhara around Imbarara, which is a city south of Uganda. So the project is working well. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Now, I had a quick question. How are the heifers fertilised? Do, do they have bulls over there or are they artificially inseminated? They, well, they are encouraged to use artificial insemination. Now, it is difficult because they've only got one heifer. 
And so it's hard to detect when a heifer is in season if you haven't got another animal with it. Um, and of course the tendency is if the neighbour's got a bull, well, what the heck, let's use the bull. We're trying to encourage that not to happen because they have available to them the very best semen in the world. So uh, we're encouraging that and we're working it towards that. Okay, and so obviously how was all this funded then? Uh, churches in Te Oamudu, to start with, we have, we've got some very generous people in our churches and uh, we pay those that go, the teams that go, pay their own airfares and they pay their own accommodation and living expenses. But when we, we made the appeal in, the, in that first year, there was money given to buy six good heifers. And they were, I guess, the equivalent of around about 600 New Zealand dollars each. So there you are, you've got about three and a half thousand dollars that we were able to take and use in that way. So it's really good. That's a fabulous uh, project to be involved in and congratulations to, to you and the Turners and uh, we wish you all the best and um, hope to see lots more heifers over there to help the Ugandans. Thank good. you. Okay, thanks.